Mr. Michael Hannett, the so-called Mr. Perfect right now. Now, he actually sees more pain coming in. Now, who is he? He is the Chief Investment Strategist of Bank of America, Merrill Lynch Global Research. Now, why is he known to be Mr. Perfect? Let me explain to you very shortly. But very important is that Mr. Perfect now is actually expecting more pain to come. So before we go into that in detail, disclaimer apply as usual. And thank you, Ames, for all the strong support. Now, the Mr. Perfect that I know is this guy. <laughs> okay, now this guy is a wrestler. How many of you recognize him? He is Mr. Kurt Henning. All right, he is the guy who is known to be the Mr. Perfect in World Federation. Okay, the World Wrestling Federation. And the interesting part is that his son is a wrestler and his dad is also a wrestler. Hmm, a wrestling family. So the thing is this, he has this signature move that he called as the perfect plex okay it's a suplex uh, move whereby you do this to finish off your opponent for the wrestling game and of course he always do this so that and he's been coined for doing the very perfect uh move here so and that's why he called himself mr perfect okay but this perfect now is not the one we're talking about the one we're talking about is this guy michael hannett now, why is he Mr. Perfect in this case? Now, because what happened was he predicted the S&P 500 to fade off or come off at 4327 area. The point is this, okay? He gave the target at 4328 and the highest point of the S&P 500, as you can see on the screen right now, is 4327.5. Oh my God. He was really, really good, okay? So according to his call, he believed that this is a bear market rally and he expect new lows to happen for the stock market. And what happened after that? Wow, let's take a look at this, guys. You can see right now, the market really, really came off from where he called for the high at 43.28. The market went down all the way until 30, to this point here itself. 3883 level so that means that he was spot on for almost 500 points on S&P 500 uh, we were also pretty near to it we, we called for sell somewhere around here and added more over here so we are not too far away from Mr. Perfect but nonetheless itself he is the one that got it all right at this point here itself so what does he has to say to all of us okay this is where it get very important this game moment let me just clear my screen a little bit okay now, he's actually expecting this to happen soon. He expects that because of the Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth region has ended, he realized that the bond yield itself is basically coming up. Okay, This is not a good sign. When the yields are moving up itself, right, usually the stock market will be pulling down a little bit. And because of all this thing itself, he also noticed that the week started with the German boons. Now, the asset swap spread has a... Uh, Bridge the Lehman Brothers high time. Now the Lehman Brothers high time was somewhere around here and well we are now way above it. So what I'm trying to explain is that this is not a very good sign. In fact itself, right? He believed that this is actually going to be a problem. In fact, it'll be a problem for the market itself. So in his opinion, he believed that all right. This is where the Lehman Brothers problem happened back in 08 and the market after that we all know has held down. Then back in 12 to, I mean, 2012 and 13, we also saw the euro breakup whereby the uh, two year asset swap spread went up. So he believed that it will happen again and this is likely possible. Okay, this is with all this thing in mind right now, right? It is pretty clear that um, there is a potential problem coming up. So he look at this price rate, um, this, uh, what do you have here? Moment, let me just do my mouse a little bit. Okay. The price ratio global equity to bonds. Now back then it's all right. We have was 2.3 and now we are much, much higher. So usually when this is uh, at a high level, it's all right. It become a very dangerous position for traders, even though the equity market seemingly still holding up, right? But that is a concern. And of course, the problem with the demand supply is that the largest equity outflow since 20, June 2022 has happened. So which means that right, people are moving their funds away from the equity market and this is not a good sign. And usually when all these things happen itself for a trader or investor, you must stand by that things may get something off hand. So we can see from the screen right now. that uh, we have this, um, the tech outflow is really coming down. It's more than the, it's, it's the lowest level compared to 2019. 
right? As we all know, in 2019, we saw the market itself was coming back down and because the funds were exiting. So now we are have pretty, actually having the same thing once again. And this is coming from the uh, Bank of America Global Research. And of course, for the European side itself, it's the worst outflow episode since uh, 2016. You can see that, wow, look at the, the, the amount of money coming out. So think about this. Where will be the next problem? Well, in 1997, we have the Asia financial crisis and 07 with the Lehman crisis. Now, it is very possible that it's this time around, it could be the Europe side. And that's the reason why um, Hannah is thinking that the problem may come from Europe and this may get pretty bad because it will be a spillover to US side and this can bring the market down quite a fair bit. All right, because this is the biggest, largest outflow from technology since um, January 2019 and it's 30th week of outflow from the European equities. 30th weeks. Oh my God, this is really, really bad. So with all this information from Michael Hannett, he believed that right there could be more selling to come and that's the reason why I want you to be careful, especially as we approach this coming period. Okay, all right. So let's just now move on and let's look at the charts of this one s p 500 the 500 400 600 annual earnings and we can see now here that usually when we are above a certain number we will have a bit of pullback so the last time we saw it was about 100 level and then we went up all the way to about 107 170 level and now we are nearly more than 220 so this is whereby the the we can see that a lot of companies now the pe ratio is pretty high right so with all these things telling us right now, there is a fair chance that can be a pullback in the near future. So that's the reason why I felt that, right? That's the reason why the funds are getting out because they know that the current PE ratio doesn't stand a whole water. And of course, with the Federal Reserve going to increase interest rate, which I believe is going to be 75 basis point. Plus, also, there is this uh, QT coming in on the 15th and 30th of September. Very good chance the stock market will likely be hit. Right, there'll be some pain coming in, and of course, when that all happens itself, we do know that recession is always near the corner, and that's the reason why I felt that there could be some selling in the near future. All right, so with that, we have done with Michael Hannett. Let's look at the charts right now and see what do we have for today. Now, for today itself, right, let's look at the China market. Now, China market is currently now um, trading on the downside, and I told you before. That there's a strong resistance at this point right here itself. That is the moving average MA30. And last Friday, the market tapped on it and now it's pulling back. So its market is going with the flow right now. And there's a good chance the market may continue to drag it down all the way back to 13,000 level, which I mentioned to you a couple of days ago. Then, of course, the US Dow Jones for today. Let's look at the US Dow with a TWB indicator. Now, we still expect the Dow Jones to tap 32,323. That is the BMB extension one time one. And because the MA30 itself at 32,367 is pretty nearby. But at the same time, we can see that our KSI is red in color. And definitely the KSI is, up, is having an uptick. That means that that sort of selling pressure likely will happen today. So I want to tell you this, if the market can push to 32,367 or 32,323, that will be the best deal. And then after that, we pull back down, that is a good time to sell. But if the market fail to touch 32,323 and goes below MLP, that will be very disastrous. Okay, so I think that we should end somewhere around here for today. All right. The Nasdaq itself have missed the BMB one time one just by a, uh, a little bit. Um, the high of the day is 12,675, but the expectation is 12,683. But very important is, very important is that the market touches the MA30 12,674. Now, if you look at our 15 minute chart, you can see a very clear indication that the green dot was there. So it basically, the high of the day touches the MA30 and that's why the green dot is there, informing traders that there could be big movement coming in. And in this case itself, the market chose to be on the downside. So that is the reason why I think that the market might be pulling back down and there's a lot of funds moving out from the technology side itself. If you look at the chart for the NASDAQ, you can see that this is very clear. Every time there's a pump up itself, right? there will be a selling coming soon. I suspect that the selling will be coming soon in the next few days. So watch out for the CCYR, okay? Now, S&P 500, as you can see, it is it touches the um, MA30 at 4072 this morning. Now, of course, the best thing is to hit 4094, but the high was 4088. 
So if the market now is below 4072, that means that there could be some selling coming in. And you can see on the screen right now, many green dots means that, that the market has touched the MA30. And if the market is not able to hold water, I suspect that it's going to come down all the way. And there's a chance for the S&P 500 to come down 4038 level. So traders, 4038, please be careful on this. It is very possible. All right, and then we're going to look at the Nikkei. Now, the Nikkei itself is has gap up, so let me just give you a miss. Hong Kong market is closed today. DAX will open later. Let's look at the oil market. Now, oil today itself, right, has rebounded off the lows. As you can see, off the lows, he hit the, he hit the KCB level at about uh, 81 to 80 level, and then now it's recovering. But as long as the market stays below the MA30, which is $88.50, I kind of believe that it's going to go down again. Now, in fact, people have been asking me how low can crude oil goes down. I believe that if the U.S. economy and the global economy is not doing well, there is a chance for crude oil to go down all the way to $77, okay? It is possible for crude oil to go down to $77. So traders, you really need to be careful on this. Now, how about the gold market? Let's take a look at the gold market. Now, for the gold market itself, right? Okay, here's where we are right now. It's likely going to be a sideway market, but it's below pivot 2 for today, 1714. So there's a good chance that they will break MLP2 and come down all the way to 1699. I strongly believe that 1699 could be a strong support. But if the gold go below 1699, then 1673 will be likely next. Okay, watch out for this. And of course, for silver, I'm kind of bullish with silver right now, the way that it's not really going again, uh, the same way as gold. So if I can get silver coming back down to about $17.30, so that's the PMB level, this will actually be a turnaround point. And then after that, I foresee that silver will be moving up. Yeah, because usually when two counters are supposed to be like brothers and sisters, and one of them doesn't behave differently, it's all right, then you know something is wrong. And that's the reason why I felt that silver could be a buy in the near term okay silver could be a buy in the near term okay now how about the bitcoin market now the bitcoin market shows that there is evidently some buying since the start of the month but um, the current upside now is kind of hampered by the kcb at 21,500 600 series so now the thing is this the mlp for today is 21,537 and if the market loses 21,537 or the mlp there is a chance that the market may pull back all the way down to 2015 2553, which happened to be the MA30 for today. Now, I still am, I'm still very bearish with the Bitcoin. I believe that once the market break MLP, it will be a good sell. Okay. And of course, we have, where is it? We have the Ethereum. Ethereum has also recovered on its own, not as strong as Bitcoin in a way, in terms of that. But then now, uh, overall itself is stronger than Bitcoin. Okay. Overall. Hence, now the thing is this, now the uh, Ethereum is coming back down and it's below MLP of 1747. So, uh, okay, so I believe that, right, this is the uh, the market itself is going to test 1632, the MA30 in the near future, yeah? All right, watch out for this. This will likely be happening. All right, so we have done the, con uh, using the TWB chart itself. I'm going to show something on the conventional, on the Dow Jones. Let's take a look right here, everybody. So the Dow Jones, uh, if you take this number, 31,411 uh, plus 33,258, and you take it and divide it by two, you get somewhere in middle, something like this. Okay, this is the middle ground of the uh, market. And you can see that the market didn't really, really, this recent movement didn't really go past the midpoint. And this actually speaks for itself that there could be a potential pullback back to 31,411 and if the market really do that then of course the next move the very important support will be here at 30,566 so the last time when this happened the market rebounded pretty strongly so I believe that this time around it will come back down and rebound again all right but of course if the market really breaks 35 percent the next target will be the 80 percent mark and that's 29,563 but if you ask me what's my real view on the market I believe that it could be sliding down further to about this point here about 27,000 area okay all right now for my krw at the moment now both sides are i mean the the ksi is red the krw is flat so that means that there should be some fight between the bull and bear so in later in the afternoon uh if you actually see that the market is pulling back down 
and breaks below the uh, pivot 2 at 31,896, then there should be some more selling to come. All right, there's no reason to be panicking. All right, and uh, okay, there we have this uh, one more. Okay, let me just bring it in. I don't where is that? Okay, never mind. I just uh, leave it there for today. So uh, I'm trying to explain you now. Very important is that I believe that the stock market itself may be pulling back, and traders need to be very careful with all the economic figures coming up. So stay tuned, and I wish you the best in trading. This is Kel signing off. Bye bye.